Sean, you talked last week about how your team, you didn't feel like your team practiced well going into the week. Did you kind of maybe figure out why that was, why that kind of hit maybe at this point in the season? Um, not, not really. Um, you know, we have uh, obviously a new group, a lot of new faces. Uh, I feel like our team has really responded when things haven't gone well. Uh, I'm almost better than when they have gone well, which, you know, makes sense. It's easy to relax when uh, when things are are going well with victories. And I think when, you know, when you lose, everybody's uh, on edge a little bit more. Um, you know, I, I, the more seasoned your group is in terms of being through things, experiences, and I think the, the less difference, less of a difference between uh, things are good, this is how I feel, things aren't good, this is how I feel. It's, it's more even keel. And, uh, but, you know, for us right now, it's, it's about getting ready for Cal on Thursday and then knowing that we're, you know, leaving to play Cal and Stanford and it's our next uh, road trip, learning from uh, – the weekend, not just the UCLA game, but the USC game and, and being ready to go and, and better. We did a good job the last time we took the road, um, not just because we won, but I thought the level of play, the focus that we had uh, on the trip, before the trip, during games, it's what you want it to be. It's maybe the best that I have felt about our team just because we, uh, we played well. And uh, we played well in two different games against two different styles. And uh, this trip represents a very similar, uh, very similar challenge in that Cal plays a different style than Stanford. Cal reminds me a lot of the Washington State game because they're very good at home. They're four and one in our conference at home. They have 10 wins at home and they've struggled away from home. They have a first year head coach who's very good. And uh, guys play at home with uh, no pressure and a lot of confidence. And, uh, and they do a good job like systematically. Um, and then I think you have Stanford, you know, on Saturday that is our conference's best defensive team. Uh, you got a really, really good freshman point guard. And uh, obviously they're playing for a lot. You know, the difference is, uh, you know, Cal, I think, is, is playing to build their program and have a, as good of a season as they can have, whereas Stanford is uh, you know, playing for everything that we are. So uh, for us, it's uh, – to uh, to continue to to be as ready as we can and have have some good focus. Is there one or two big reasons you looked at the last two losses, UCLA and ASU, and Nico not having any assist in either of those two games? Do you point to one or two things in those instances why that's happening? I mean, the, the obvious is, I mean, we we had uh, two horrific shooting performances, uh, and you know, it's um, I would say one of the things that's unique about our team is. Usually, you know, the game kind of flows from start to finish. You, you know, you may have a good half, but, uh, you know, if you look at our UCLA game, I think we made four of our first maybe six threes. Uh, those, those shots went in the first 12 minutes of the game. Uh, in the second half, we were 0 for 12 from three. You know, uh, again, against ASU, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you know, obviously we had a big first half offensively. And then we went 0 for 8 in the same game in the second half. So, you know, it's hard to get assist when the guys that you're passing the ball to, ball's not going in. And uh, but no doubt, we're we're going to be a better team when uh, when Nico does both, and uh, and when our when our entire team is more efficient. Is he forcing some of his drives? And I look back to that USC game. About 10 minutes into the second half, he he, he kind of went on a drive, shot got. Uh, blocked or <coughs> and then they turned that into a transition three at the other end. Was that a bad, and you, and you took him out, was that a bad drive because he challenged the guy that was 6'6 six, six in the lane one-on-one, -on -one, or is it because of the position he put you in defensively by making that choice? Right? No, we want we want Nico to be aggressive. Uh, obviously, you know, we, we want all of our players to be efficient and take good shots. Uh, you know, sometimes you can take good shots, though, and, uh, and the ball doesn't go in. You know, uh, Nico's made... Uh, I thought against both teams, UCLA and SC, but especially UCLA, he had some good drives. One he made and a couple that he didn't make, and the ball just didn't go in. But, you know, sometimes what happens is, you know, you get down, uh, game's not going well, game's not going well for your team. It's an odd feeling because you're used to winning. And, you know, your way of, of going about correcting it is to make a play. And, uh, and sometimes... Making a play 
that particular play isn't there. You, know, you still have to be patient. You still have to play. And, you know, that's one thing. You know, I watched the Baylor-Texas game a little bit last night. And, you know, Baylor is the number one team in college basketball. And we've played them in each of the last two years. And they have a very deliberate, unique style of play. They beat you up physically, rebounding. They're very good in the half court defensively. And they have some guards that are terrific players. But their pace is so deliberate. And, you know, the score at halftime with the number one team in America is, is 22 to 16. You know, a year ago, Virginia won the national championship. And if you follow their, their pace of play and, and their scores, I think there's, what, 353 or 354 teams in America. They might have been 354 in terms of pace. When you got a new group, and especially when, you're, when your youngest players are the most talented guys on your team, uh, it's almost like the other team's not cooperating if they're not running with you. You know, It's not that we're trying to score 110 points, but we like to push the ball. We play at a faster tempo. Uh, you cannot speed up you know, a good team that is going to rebound, play solid defense, take care of the ball, and walk the ball up. And UCLA's tempo is much, much different than SC's tempo. On a Thursday night, SC plays a pretty fast tempo, and the game feels right. Well, the next day, two days later, you play UCLA, and UCLA is playing a Baylor type of style. Uh, I thought that their style affected us, you know, because it's kind of like time of possession. If you shoot a quick shot, and it's just an ill-advised or a tough shot, then you're going to go on defense sometimes for 25 or 30 seconds. If, for example, you foul on that possession, foul in the last 10 seconds, you might be on defense for up to 45 seconds. And then they score. Or now you're down six, you're down four. And what do you want to do? You want to make a play. You want to get things right. Well, you're, you're tempted to do it quickly. Well, it starts to work against you unless that ball goes in. And again, the better the other team is, the more difficult it is to score in the first 15, 10 seconds of the possession, no matter what style they choose. A year ago, if you played against Washington, Mike Hopkins zone with an older group, Matisse Thibel at the top, no matter how much you wanted to strike them quickly, it just was either going to be a tough shot or you had to be more patient. And therefore, they're an excellent defensive team. You know, the other night, uh, that style affected us, and it's affected us at Oregon State. It affected us uh, to some degree at Baylor, although obviously Baylor is very, very good. And uh, on Thursday, we're going to play a team that, that is the slowest tempo in our conference. So when you talk about learning through failure or just learning from experience, us understanding that, you know, we can't have a halftime talk with the other coach and say, speed it up. Uh, they're going to play a style. They're allowed to play a style, just like they're allowed to press. They're allowed to play zone. They're allowed to, you know, run an offense where there's a lot of screening. I mean, we can't control what the other team does, but what we can control is us being smart, tough-minded. When you play in that style against that style, you have to be really tough-minded, and a lot of the good things you're going to do on defense are going to happen at the end of the clock. Can't give them second shots. Can't reach in and foul at the last 10 seconds. Got to stay in the stance a little bit longer. And on offense, we want to strike. But if that doesn't present itself early, we have to be equally smart. And guess what? Zeke Naji against UCLA, he, he might not get as many shots as he's going to get against USC. That doesn't mean he didn't get the ball. That just means that there are fewer possessions. The tempo is slower. So everybody has to adjust, the players, the coach, et cetera. And, you know, as you talk about experience, when you have a team that's been through these experiences, it's almost something you really don't have to address because uh, inherently they learn and they understand the differences in style. With our team, uh, I thought the other night we were frustrated. And, uh, you know, we were three for 19 from two in the first half against a physical team that had one block shot in the game. You know, if you're three for 19 from two, you're probably playing against a group of guys that play above the rim and block shots and are really athletic and long. They had one block in 40 minutes. We were three for 19 from two, and then the same group after halftime, we came out and we went 0 for 12 from three. I mean, it's historically, you know, just an, an abysmal 
offensive performance. And when I say that, trust me when I tell you, our offense had a lot to do with our defense and how it felt. We reached in at the end of the clock. We, we gave up key second shots, especially in the second half, first half, not as many. And uh, when you don't get defensive stops, you can't get out and run. When you can't get out and run, and you're us, it kind of takes away something you're good at. So you're almost playing without that. And it doesn't mean you're going to lose or you can't win, but you're going to win in a different way. The score may be 60 to 58. You know, just like when I, when I say under the 10-minute mark of the game, the score was 44-43 UCLA. It almost didn't feel that way because the score should have been, in our mind, well, 60 to 59, right? Well, it's okay. It's 44-43. Everything's fine. And we have to just be solid here down the stretch and see if we can win a hard-fought game. But being able to win hard-fought games, you know, again, back to our team, being able to win a game away from home, uh, being able to play with a big lead, those are all things that, you know, we're probably not as good at as we need to be. And my hope is that we keep improving. And, uh, and I and our staff do a good job teaching these guys. You know, time score situation. You know, if you're up 12 or up 15 in high school, it's a wrap. You're not going to lose unless you're playing against an amazingly talented team, right? In college, if you're up 12 or 15, that 12 or 15 could become six in two or three bad possessions. And then it's six, that's a two-possession game. So, you know, you go back even to the USC game, part of my frustration or one of the things we tried to talk a lot about with our team after the game is, look, everybody's excited we've won. But at the 10-minute mark, you know, we, we had the game in complete control. For us to finish the game one or two possessions up, there's a lot that didn't go right down the stretch. What is it? Well, if you look, two or three. Not eight, but two or three very quick shots that didn't go in, followed by a couple quick breakdowns on defense. And all of a sudden, that lead goes from 15 to 6, 12 to 6. I mean, it gets down to four. Make miss a few free throws on top of it. So, you know, again, um, for us, that's who we are. And, uh, you know, we're about ready to go on the road, play against two different styles. And uh, we have to be good. You know, when our team plays well, we can beat anybody. When our team is mediocre or we're not locked in, uh, we're very vulnerable. And I think the next eight games will be the same for us. So when you're watching, the end, especially at the end of that game, uh, when that's happening, are you thinking as long as the shots are okay, they should keep shooting, they're going to get out of it eventually? Or, or, or in some of those situations, you feel like, you know, maybe you got to – try and get even more to Zeke or whatever? Or yeah, no, we, we did for sure. You know, I, I, I said this at the end of our non-conference season that, you know, for Zeke, because of his efficiency, because of, of uh, him drawing fouls, obviously the shots he takes are, are in and around the basket, that, you know, getting him about right around that 20 mark shots per game, meaning field goal attempts and free throw attempts. And, you know, I think it was 18 against UCLA, but you have to keep in mind it was 18 in a lower possession game. He ended up going 10 for 10 from the foul line. But, you know, Zeke, they did a good job on Zeke being physical. You know, he was one for seven, and then he made the last shot of the game at 17 seconds. So he ended up going two for eight and 10 for 10 from the line. You know, some of his free throw attempts and some of his field goal attempts came because he had six offensive rebounds. But Zeke and really our entire team, we didn't score and finish as well. And I think UCLA's physicality had something to do with that. And, uh, you know, some of it might be that once in a while, no matter how hard we try, we're going to miss some high percentage shots. Just like, you know, Nico from the free throw line. Nico is a career and will be forever 80-plus percent free throw shooter. But in a single game, he's going to have a game where he doesn't make them. That's happened to everybody. And I think for us, when we don't make them, shots and can we still win you know on the Washington swing that was something we did a great job of uh, and you know I look at kind of our efficiency defensively I think going into the LA weekend we were 24 in America as a defensive team and uh, right now we're 43 44 it's hard to drop 20 spots in two games especially with those two games being played at home 
So and as much as it's about his, the historic bad night we had scoring and shooting against UCLA, and that's true, you know, I thought in both games our defense regressed. And uh, when our defense regresses, uh, again, we're not nearly as good of a team as we are when I watched us play against Isaiah Stewart in uh, Ellerby on the last road trip. Bo you know, Ellerby, when he left our game, he played against Washington on Sunday. Guy had 34 points, you know. Uh, we did a really good job on him. Isaiah Stewart's one of the best freshmen that I have coached against. And I thought, you know, whether he had a tough night or not, we had a lot to do with it. We, we were smart. We were on it. And, you know, when our defense is playing well, that always leads to more transition. And that's where we're at our best. And I, I don't think that's a secret. So uh, we have to earn that right to go, go in transition because of tough-minded, solid, good defense. You know, the other part about the UCLA game that's, you know, kind of a head scratcher is they also had 18 turnovers, you know, and we had, I think, nine. You know, so it's like that's a big difference, especially in the style that we play. But, you know, our shooting percentage was so abysmal we couldn't take advantage of that. With, with UCLA, the, the physical style, I'm wondering if, you know, especially that and Baylor and maybe a couple other instances that other teams are seeing this and saying this is what we got to do to Arizona, just go all out. And do you expect to see more of that? And if so, you know, what, what do you do to counter it? You know? it's, it's hard to turn that part of things on and off. You know, you either play that style or you don't. But those teams that do play that style, I think they're – probably aware and what they're trying to do is do exactly what what happened and that is keep us out of transition uh, rebound the ball at the best level that they can you know and just really keep us in front obviously uh, you know we have a number of guys that can really shoot the ball but when we've had our off nights we've had them uh, and you know and that's the other part just from a confidence perspective you know we've we've had some groups here over the last two days where we've brought them back uh, which at this time of year, it's not easy to do, but not for a grueling workout, but just shooting. You know, groups of four where we're able to practice and do the things that we need to do as a team, but just kind of carve out some time where 40 minutes, you know, and watch them really allow them to watch the ball go in the basket and, and shoot quality shots and just, you know, get, get their rhythm back. And, you know, it's amazing sometimes when you mix that in how a guy's confidence can return because, uh, and we have a couple guys that have certainly gone through that confidence bug, but you know usually you work your way out of it. Yeah, you talked about Josh. Uh, you know, we we all have asked about him. What about Dylan and his confidence, and what what are you doing with him specifically? You know, we're we're really working with Dylan to to shoot the ball, um, and uh, you know he's he's obviously in a tough stretch. But you know, I go back to the uh, Colorado Utah home stand when uh, he played really well and shot the ball well. Uh, boy, we, we're a lot better team. Uh, Arizona State at home, you know, back to the Wooden uh, Classic and some of our non-conference games. But, you know, with Dylan, I, I think the hard part is when he's been off, he's, he's really been off. And uh, he's in a, in a tough slump. But, you know, we win as a team and lose as a team. It's, it doesn't fall on Dylan not making shots. We have a, a number of guys that could play better. Uh, there's a number of things we're trying to do coaching-wise to be better. So... You know, we, we have to go on this trip and be the best that we can be. We have four away games and four home games left in our regular season, and uh, we've played some really good basketball. Uh, it'll be an interesting trip because the last time we were on the road, I thought we played maybe the best we played all year. And, uh, you know, that's, that's really what we're trying to do. Um, I mean, you mentioned the other day with Dylan, obviously you need his defense too. I mean, you're, are you – you're not thinking of changing the lineup or anything with him? We could. We could change the lineup. I mean, we're at that point. Yeah, just uh, sometimes it relaxes guys when they, they don't have the pressure of starting. and Sometimes you just change it up, mix it up. It helps everybody. So that could potentially happen. Uh, we're not there yet. You know, we took Sunday off and we practiced yesterday. We haven't practiced yet today. So the next couple of days I think we'll make that decision. But regardless, uh, you know, Dylan is going to play. You know, the guys who haven't started are going to play. And we just, we just need quality play. That's what we need. We need uh, – our team has to play well. And, uh, you know, somebody asked me after the UCLA game what our identity is. And, you know, sometimes I feel like, you know, an identity can come at different times. You can have one for a while and lose it, regain it, 
Sometimes all of a sudden your team changes and you you almost have a different identity. But I think the thing that we we hang our hat on is this is the best team that we've had in terms of taking care of the ball. Uh, we're not walking it up. We're not trying to play scared. I mean, we're pushing it and uh, we're running, you know, at times really good offense, moving the ball. And, you know, to play with single digit turnovers is quite a feat. And uh, we've done that a couple of times, even with Nico having three or four. So uh, I think we have a lot of guys that are taking care of the ball. And that stat right there is a big one, especially on the road. You know, you go to Cal and Stanford and, you know, you walk away from that road, road trip with uh, single digit turnovers or less than 20 in two games. Uh, that's a big, big key towards us being, being successful. And, uh, I, I don't know if we've had a team that's done it better. I also believe that we can do it even better here down the stretch because everybody's really sure right now of who they are. And like I said, uh, you know, I think Nico can even do a better job taking care of it. And if he does, you know, taking care of the ball, getting shots is a big deal. And uh, we're the best that we've been. Defensively, you know, we continue to be a work in progress. But I'll tell you this, if you judge us by our Pac-12 games, we've defensive rebounded a lot better than we have in the non-conference. And that's really without Josh Green. You know, Josh can rebound a lot better. And we're on him to do it, and I think he can do that. But it's a little bit like Nico maybe carving one or two turnovers away. Josh getting one or two more defensive rebounds. But if we can stay near the top, I think we're the best in the conference right now, defensive rebounding. That's a long way from where we were uh, in December. So we've made improvements in certain areas. Uh, we've just been a very inconsistent team shooting. I mean, uh, like I said, you know, being up big, big margin on the road, uh, it never really felt that way because, you know, the, the, the lead evaporated in about six minutes. And uh, going 0 for 10 or 0 for 8 and a half, you know, we, we have to avoid that. Some of it is shot selection. Some of it is who's taking the shot. Some of it is confidence. And you know what, some of it's probably just execution, but there's always those shots where you say, we can't get a better one than that, and it didn't go in. When you talk about defense and defending the three specifically, there were a couple instances over the weekend where Stone was late getting out on shooters because he was kind of defending in the lane. How much is that him needing to get out there quicker? How much of that is the other big, whether it's Zeke or I, were rotating back from that, that high school? Yeah, stage? no, it's, it's team. Certainly Stone was guilty a couple times, but the, the pass to three-point shooters is the key. You know, it's uh, if the guy puts a bullet, like I'm talking about just a rocket pass from the top of the key area to the corner and hits the guy in his hands, Stone's going to be late, but it's not his fault. The players that are on the ball, you know, they're, they're like dead fish, you know, hands down, not where they're supposed to be. And, and it's like the guy throws a strike. So some of it is the two people on the ball, the player on the ball, ball pressure, hands up. The ball's moving towards half court, so he can't hit the guy in the corner. It's not just as you see it with your eyes, Stone's late. He is late. Some of it was him, but some of it was, was the other guys as well. So, you know, defense is so much of a team. It's like the last drive against Arizona State. You know, we might have had a player who got beat on that drive, and that's on him. But it doesn't mean that someone can't help and block the shot. You know, I think about Nick Johnson in Hawaii uh, playing against San Diego State where he made, like, a recovery from 15 feet, 18 feet, Guy's about ready to win, a, win the game with the, with the layup, and he smashes the shot off the black backboard, you know. Well, you forget somebody got beat on that same drive, but a teammate helped. And, you know, defense is really like that. That's why when I talk a lot about rebounding, you know, Zeke Najee's rebounding right now is outstanding. I mean, if you look at him in the history books of Arizona, I mean, if he stays healthy, He'll, he'll have one of the great seasons rebounding in the history of our program. And by freshman standards, I would say that only DeAndre would have done it better. And that's a lot of great freshmen who've played here. Uh, but it's not just him. It's our guards. I mean, we, you know, team, a couple breakdowns we had against UCLA. It wasn't him. It was a wing player running from the perimeter. So uh, 
team defense is, is big and, you know, we have to play. Two things that travel, uh, three things that travel, team defense, defensive rebounding and turnovers. You know, you can't always control the shots, but if, you, if you're really, really good in those three areas, you're going to be in the game to win it. And if you don't, you don't. Seasons played out. What have you seen in terms of leadership, and has that been an issue? You know, with this group. In college basketball, your best players are your leaders. You know, uh, if a guy happens to be older, that's a really big advantage. But you know, everybody respects those that are out there when it means the most, and uh, you know, they become your leaders. And we're a young group in terms of leadership. Uh, we have some older guys that I think really do the best that they can. And they come in different forms. You know, a couple of our oldest players have only been here for a year, but they're respected in a different way, maybe because of how they go about their business off the court, how hard they practice, their, their attitude when things aren't going well. Uh, and then, you know, just because you're the oldest guy doesn't mean you're, you're a leader. And, you know, talking to a guy like Nico, just because you're a freshman doesn't mean you can't be one of our leaders. So... We we're continuing to develop that, and then really the coach and the staff have to really stay with that leadership part as well, just because you have – I mean, we have eight guys right now that are playing in games that weren't here physically a year ago. So I, it's hard to develop a culture of leadership in such a, a quick way. So, you know, you're developing it as it, as it goes. And, uh, you know, you hope when we get to late February, early March – that we have just a solid foundation that your best players have emerged. And, you know, we're, we're, we're constantly trying to develop that. Right. I you mentioned that, you mean, some of your better teams you had, guys like TJ or Solomon who had been around in your system for a while and were kind of leaders. And then you'd have a guy like Aaron Gordon come in. And I'm guessing it was easier for him in that sense than maybe for Nico because Nico's maybe – yeah, I mean, uh, you you can look at – I'll use Lowry Markinen as an example, and he was obviously an outstanding freshman for us, but you can't discount Kadeem Allen, uh, who was in his third year here. He was in his fifth year out of high school. He emerged as just a great leader uh, because of how he performed, but also how he practiced and what he had been through. I mean, he redshirted uh, – you know, he, he didn't qualify coming out of high school. He went the junior college route, um, and he was a tough guy. He's a great teammate, and you know, no doubt that you know having him out there as a starting point guard clearly helped a guy that had never been, not only in college basketball, but never had been in the country, you know, other than one time. Uh, you know, Stanley. You know, Stanley. I look back at his freshman year. If you look at his rebounds, look at his points. Sometimes you forget he was the Pac-12 freshman of the year. But he had his moments where he didn't play well and he was learning and uh, kind of the change from high school to college. But he was just surrounded by such an older veteran group that that responsibility didn't always fall on him. Uh, the three freshmen and really four, if you count Christian, it's really remarkable of what we've asked them to do and what they have been able to do and the difference of – what it would be like without them versus having them here. And sometimes I almost feel like it's unfair. But I also know what they're trying to accomplish in, uh, you know, this next eight games. You know, I don't look at them as freshmen anymore because uh, the good is we've been with them from start to finish, and they've seen a lot, and I think they're more seasoned and experienced. So when you talk about, you know, leading the leadership on the road with them in February is much different than when we went to Baylor. So... Uh, that's why that's how I would answer the leadership question.